everybody welcome to physics conversation today we're going to go over physics exam number 18 we have two students one from i believe brown and other from nyu so my name is rifat baria i'm a physics master student at brown university which is unlike nyu and i believe man brown is cool too but thank you i'm going to be a math and physics major at nyu problem one uh, a rubber box is moving on dry asphalt with a constant velocity. You're pulling it uh, with a force of 100 newtons northeast and a 30 degree angle with respect to the horizontal. The mass is closest to which of the following? 130, 21, 180, 18 kilograms, or none of the above? All right, uh, you said that uh, rubber... Rubber on dry asphalt. On um, Like concrete, right? Dry asphalt is like concrete rubber on. It something to note is that uh, the coefficient can. of kinetic friction is 0.67 for such a surface. All right. Uh, the first thing uh, we know that we have to find, of course, uh, the mass. Mm -hmm. But before we find the mass, uh, I want to ask you some questions. NYU and Brown. The first question is, let's say, let's consider uh, a small car with 1,000 kilogram. Mm -hmm. and let's consider a big truck with 10,000 kilogram. And both of them are moving on, like this is rubber and this is concrete, right? Mm -hmm. What would be the mu k, or are both of them moving on the same road outside? What would be the mu, mu k for this one? 0.67. What would be the mu k for this one? Also, point six seven. All right, which one has a bigger force of friction? The, the truck. This one. Oh. Because it's dependent on the normal force. Oh, okay. So if you increase the mass, this guy increases, but this guy remains same. Yeah. Uh huh. All right. Okay. With that out of the way, let's see whether we can solve this problem quickly. Uh, what we want to discover is that in this problem, what we want to discover is that. Uh, that if you increase the mass, mm -hmm. the coefficient of friction does not get affected. Okay, now, the first thing, what is FAX? Uh, 50, 50 root 3 newtons. Not 53 newtons. 50 root 3. Uh, no, oh, 50 root 3. So 86.6 uh, 86 6 newtons. Okay. Um, what is FY? 50. Yeah. Newton. 15 newton. All right. Uh, NYU, let's see. NYU, what is F? F. Since it's moving at a constant velocity, we can assume that FAX is equivalent to FF, but in the opposite direction. Uh, the brown, what is FN? Uh, what is FN? FN is. F you you can you can give me a fraction form. Okay. FN so. is eighty six point six over point sixty seven. So, which is. 129.2 newtons. Okay, good. And NYU, can you tell me what is FG, which is the weight? Well, it's going to be the sum of FN and FY, which is 179 newtons. All right, Brown, can you tell me the mass of the box? It's still with Newton's second law. Uh, F equals MG is equal to 179. So mass is 179 over 10 or 9.8. Okay, so mass is? So mass is 18.26 uh, kilograms. So 18 kilograms, we want to just round it to nearest whole number. That was problem number one. So let's go over problem number two. This time round, can you read? Yeah. Uh, a 0 0.05 kilogram bullet strikes a 1.7 kilogram box and displaces it by a height of 3.6 meters. After hitting the box, the bullet becomes embedded and remains inside the box. What, uh, what is the velocity of the bullet just before the impact? <clears throat> so, this is before, this is after. Okay, so this is after. After is in the purple, mm -hmm. and the before is in green. Before is in um, black. 
All right. So what we're gonna do is after NYU, can you tell me if this is location one and this is location two, at what location you have maximum kinetic energy? At what location? Of course, the bullet is inside the. You said ram, right? I said NYU. Oh shoot. Uh, at what location is what? Uh, maximum kinetic energy. Well, it's location one because the bullet just dropped. From there, the, all of the kinetic energy gets co converted into potential until it comes to rest. So half mb squared is equal to mgh mm cancel. So v is square root of 2gh. And so velocity is 2 times g is 9.8h is 3.6. So how much is that? 8.4 8.4 meter per second what are we trying to find the velocity of the bullet just before it hits the just before box. it goes into the box so Which what means do we have to use conservation of momentum what is the velocity just before it goes inside uh -huh. we don't know that we know the velocity when it's inside we don't know it before it goes inside okay so we must use conservation of momentum so conservation of momentum brown what is the conservation of momentum equation uh p initially equals p final P before is equal to P. Yeah. We have a P before, right? Yeah. So M1 V1 plus M2 V2 is equal to M1 V1 prime plus M2 V2 prime. And why you? I have one equation, two equation, three equation, four equation. Whose equations goes to zero? Uh, well, two. Uh, Brown, I have two equations after the collisions. Yeah, they should be combined math. Okay. Do you have any good reason of why they yeah, should be combined? Inelastic collision. Uh, inelastic collision, okay. Uh, because they stick together? Mm -hmm. Alright, so that means we are trying to find this guy, right? Uh, we are trying to find a V. v we are trying to find. We already found V. 0 0.05, V1 is equal to 8.4 times 1.75. And that gives you a final velocity of 294 meters per So second. then the velocity is uh, 8.4 times 1.75 divided by 0 0.05. And this velocity is, velocity of the bullet is how much? 294, 294 meters per second. Of course, this is greater than 8.4. Of course, what do you discover? You discover if mass increases, velocity decreases if uh, mass decreases, velocity. velocity increases. And that's all because of the conservation of momentum. That's all because of conservation of momentum. And remember, we discover conservation of momentum always hold regardless the collision type of collision. Okay, and why you want to read problem number three? Go ahead. Oh, shoot. Sorry. A 98 Newton box is pulled up a 20 meter long incline by a constant force of 54 Newtons. The vertical height gained by uh, the box is 10 meters. Find the magnitude of work done by gravity on the box. How much you're pulling it by? Um, 54 Newtons. Okay, then we got to be done before that. 54 Newtons. 54 Newtons. So we have to uh, find work done by gravity, right? Yeah, this is actually a pretty good... Wait, parallel? Work done by gravity because parallel component only do the work. Wait, wait. This can... this component doesn't do the work. Can I say something? Yeah, yeah sure. Two components. Fg parallel, Fg perpendicular. This I one does no work. This one, Mg sign theta can i ask if something works okay because the total fg is this direction and it should be obvious since this is 20 and this is 10 that this is a 30 degree angle which means this is 90 degrees so since the direction of motion is this way 30 degrees this is 90 degrees and this is fg it wouldn't be wrong to state that the angle between the direction of motion and the force would be 120 degrees. Sure. Thus, can we say that the work is equal to the total Fg, or the weight, times the distance traveled, times cosine 120? Uh, okay, cosine 120, okay, go ahead. So, Fg is obviously 98, the distance traveled is 20, and cosine 120 is minus 0.5, which gives you 980 Use. All right, good. Mm -hmm. So this is one way of doing it, and this is also uh, yeah saves lots of time. The other way of doing it, of course, uh, the more traditional way. Of course, you know that m is what 
because if the weight is 98 Newton, what is M? M is 10, right? So 10 times 9.8 times sine 30. And that gives you how much, if you don't mind? Um, I'm pretty sure, let me see. 9.8 times 10 times 49. Sine. Oh yeah, he's right. That gives you 49, okay. Oh, I'm in radiant, freaking heck. 49. Okay, so 49 Newton. What? <laughs> What component of gravity is doing 49 Newton of work? A uh, parallel. Parallel. Okay, good. Now, the work done by who? Work done by um, gravity is F, uh, D, D. Cosine theta. Cosine theta. But now, theta in this case, because F, D uh, parallel is pointing this way, and the direct of motion in this way is 180 degrees. Uh, and cosine 180 is minus 1. Minus 1. So, so work done really by, matter. Yeah, so work done by gravity is... Uh, 49 times 20, 20 which is again what do you got 980 joule yay so you got the same answer okay all right um but your way was much faster than this way all right okay all right um question number that takes us question four uh brown can you read question four yeah a spring with a spring constant of 2000 newtons per meter is compressed 0 0.4 meters from its resting position the spring is released, propelling a 5 kilogram block along a horizontal frictionless surface. This block then collides with a stationary 3 kilogram block. Find the velocity of mass 1 at the time of collision. This is mass 1, this is mass 2. What is the spring constant? 2000 newtons per meter. Wait, it's 0.4 with 1 zero. Oh, okay. Alright, so we want to find the velocity of mass one right mm -hmm. all right okay so the the thing is uh, do you want to put your hand over here no why because this one has lots of kinetic energy or potential energy because this is compressed mm -hmm. okay yeah. what does that mean half kx square and what does that mean half 2000 point one six so this is 1000 so this is 160 uh, joule and 160 joule gonna convert to what? Kinetic energy. Half mv square. That means mv square is three two zero zero. So v square is three two zero zero divided by of course five. How much? Six forty. Six. Wait 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 no no. I think you or added an extra order of magnitude. Yeah, it should be three twenty, not thirty two hundred. Three twenty, right. So v square is sixty four. Then v is Eight. 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 So who is um uh so who is like combined with who with eight meter per second? The five and one. But the rest of the problem is basically a distraction because it just asks you the velocity right before the collision. So you can answer with eight meters per second. Yeah, just right. Because oh, no friction. No. If there was a friction, then well you have to Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's it. If there is a friction then you have to pay attention. That takes us problem number five. Uh, NYU, can you read problem five? An electron is suspended, meaning no vertical movement, between two electric, uh, electrically charged plates with opposite charges. What is the electric field magnitude? All right. So, NYU, before you do even anything, I have two plates. I have an electron suspended, meaning the acceleration is? Zero. And then the, the, the net force is? Zero. Vertically. All right. Uh, okay, good. So this plate must be what? Positive or negative? Well, can I? Sure. So there's some nice logic going on behind this. So if it's suspended, that means that FD and FE have to be in opposing directions. Because if they are in the same direction, then it will accelerate downward. So we can already assume that FD is going this way, meaning FE must be going the opposite direction. Now, if this was a positive um, charge... And why you, can you not block the... What sorry. you write, okay? If this was a positive charge, the electric field would go the same direction as the electric force. But since we have an electron, then it goes in the opposite direction, which is this way. And we always know that electric fields naturally go from positive charges, by definition, to negative charges. So, we can make these plates. Okay. I think... Alright, so wait, we have to the find... Cap? The cap is here, uh, and... Uh, no, I can find it, trust me. Okay. So, we already know that the electric field is equal to Fe divided by Q. And we also know 
that Fe has to be the same in magnitude as Fg, which means... <laughs> don't, don't drop what he right anyways. Sorry. Which means that the electron is equal to Fg over Q. From the electron. Which is equal, sorry, the electric field is equal to Fg over Q. Which so Mg this, over Q. So this is the mass of the electron times G over the charge of the electron. So which is, by your reference table, 9.11 times, times 10 to the minus 31, 31, please don't interrupt me, times 9.8 divided by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. Then you can isolate all of these and then multiply that by 10 to the minus 12. Then you can use 5.6 times 10 to the minus 11. Yup, he's right. 5.58 times 10. Wait. Oh, yeah, yeah. 5.6. Yeah. Because what what you actually get on the other end of this is 55.8 times 10 to the minus 12, which reduces down to 5.58 times 10 to the minus 11. Newtons per coulomb. Yeah, you're right. right. Which is rounded to 5.6 for this. Uh, halfway. Uh, problem number 6, Brown, can you read it? Yeah. A force of 30 newtons towards the right is exerted on a wooden crate initially moving to the right on a horizontal wooden floor. The crate weighs 19.6 newtons. Find the net force. Mm -hmm. Ura Nurt, uh, can you tell me, uh, Miyuki Ura Nurt? Point three. And can you tell me when what is this, what is mass? Uh, two kilograms. All right, um, can you... Quickly tell me what is FF. It's just going to be mu k times FF, which is 0. 0.3 times 19.6. 5.88. Yup, he's correct. Then all you have to do is subtract the force applied from 5.88. 5.9. Wow, congratulations. So, you know how to use a calculator correctly. F That's really a great accomplishment, Mr. Master Student at Drill. You have. You have the max level of a 6th grader. That's truly stunning, staggering. I can't believe it, honestly. Uh, 24 Newton. Who got rejected by Brown? <coughs> okay, um... Who got rejected from NYU? Uh... I don't remember that. <laughs> number 7. Who got rejected from Stony Brook? Number 7. Ha! Sorry. Not me. <laughs> you did, though. Uh, Brown, can you read uh, number 7? Yeah. An electric field of 900 newtons per coulomb is That's, exerted by oh, a yeah. source charge of 10 coulombs on a test charge x meters away from the source charge. Okay, uh, 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 NYU, can you tell me what is the name of this field? Uh, I'm sorry, what is the name of this uh, vector? Should I just solve it? Or? Uh, no, what is the name of this vector? That's the electric force. Not electric force, sorry. The electric field? Yeah, this cannot be electric force. Hmm, what? Not it, it has to be acting on something. I mean, you don't. Have oh, the test you're right. Yeah. Right. Okay. So okay. it can't be the electric force. Yeah. Sorry, I assume the test charge was already there. And the electric force depends on the direct on the sign of the test charge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I see your reasoning. Okay, so now I'm gonna give you a negative charge, maybe one microcoulomb. Now, can you give me the direction of the electric force? Well, it's just going to be in the same direction because positive. Negative. No, it's going to be opposite direction. Oh, oh, it's the force on the electron to the proton. That's right. But I thought you were talking about the force exerted by the... Yeah, you're right. I see that. Okay, okay good. Electric force. Now, what do we need to find? We need to find the distance, distance between the two. The test All right, so... Uh, Such that the electric... And why you, can you give me the equation? Okay. We want to find the x. Well, the thing is, the electric field uh, made by this... And any point in space is, so if you have the charge just like this, then at any point in space, the electric field strength is going to be the distance from the center of the charge to that point, or then K times the charge of this, uh, times the magnitude of the charge of this charge, divided by That's R good. squared. That's good. Okay, so, now you can go. How are you? Now you okay. can go. Uh, very good. So he said that uh, E is equal to K B Q over R squared, right? Yeah. Okay, now what are you going to do? R squared is, that's, that's what we're trying to find. R squared is K B Q over e. e. So the K is 9, nine times 10 raised to 9. And I gave you B Q, which ten, is 10. ten and I gave you E, which is? 900. 900 Newton per Coulomb. Per coulomb so 900. 
And see, nice, they go nicely. Yeah, that's how you made the problem. I so, really like it. Oh, you really like it. So you don't have to use the uh, calculator. calculator. Now, uh, this probably meter is squared. I'm sorry. So R has to be 10,000 meters. What is this? 10,000 meters. Okay, excellent. Uh, that takes us problem number eight. I'm not sure whether this is NYU or Brown. Who takes it? Uh, I'll take it. Okay. So use the diagram to the right to find EY, which is the Y component of the electric field, at Q3, or charge 3. Okay. We should draw the diagram first. Okay, this one is crazy. Actually, so, can I draw it? Yeah, sure. Uh, so the net electric field in the Y direction is going to be E1Y. The electric field is radially outward. Wow, this is like a weird green. So... Right electric field, E. You're right. So, that means that this, well, in this case, it's all in the positive Y direction. So, we can just discount the X component. And then, for this one, Q2 is minus 8 microcoulombs. Since it's a negative charge, the electric field is going to be radially inward. And so, that means that it, over here, it's going to be in this direction. Now, as you can see, that direction has a positive X component, but a negative Y component. So, that means that uh, minus E2Y. So, the sign we're going to use is negative here. And this is going to be equal to E2Y times sine of what? Well, it's going to be sine of this angle. Now, what is that angle? Well, if we draw that triangle right over here, we know that uh, by the proportions of this triangle, this is pretty obviously 30, and this is 60, and since these add up to 90 by design, this has to be 30 degrees right over here. Do you see that? Yeah. So, so the angle has to be 330. Or negative 30? Uh, they're about the same. So, we have minus E2Y equals E2Y, E2 times sine 30. So, I guess the sine 330 adds the negative sign. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, so, we're not going to be talking about that. So, then, we're going to actually find the magnitudes of this. So I'm going to actually change back the purple for this one. So done. I got it. Great! Wow. Three times ten to the three. You did it faster than someone trying to explain to an you amateur did. student. Pretty cool. Though. I can't believe it took you like four minutes, Mr. Master Student. I'm surprised you got through your bachelor's. So, anyway. <clears throat> No, it's fine. When we're finding the electric field exerted by Q1, then what we have to do is just use the formula KQ1 over R squared. Now, then we're actually going to make a full algebraic formula. E2 is going to be KQ2 over R squared. So then we have E1Y minus E2Y, which is going to be KQ1 over r squared minus kq2 over r squared sine 30. Now, you will probably already know that this is one half. So then we can factor out k over r squared times q1. Objection. Minus the r's are not the same for this one, the r is three, and this one, the r is six. Great so you job. Can't factor you caught that. my mistake. Yeah, that's Good. a mistake. So you get k. You can factor out K, though, because that's the same. Okay, so you get Q1 over R squared minus Q2 over 2R squared. Uh, you made me realize I should probably mark these up. Mm -hmm. So this is K times Q1 is 4 times 10 to the negative 6. Divided by R1 squared, we know this is 3 meters, so this is going to be 9 square meters. I know that adding SI units is just a cause for trouble, but I'm going to do it anyway. 
So then you have 2 times R2 squared. Now R2 right over here is 6. So you have 2 times 36. And then you have Q2, which is minus 8. <laughs> I don't think you made me sick. The answer is 3,000. Really? Oh, it is? Yeah. Don't suffer any oh, I didn't make a mistake. No, no you didn't have <laughs> We're just solving it differently when it comes to algebraics. Yeah. But our final answer is the same. Yeah. So then we get 8 times 10 to the minus 6. So this is obviously 72, by the way. So then I'm actually going to half this to 4 times 10 to the minus 6. So, that gives us 9 times 10 to the 9, and then all of this on the inside. I'm actually going to factor out 1 over 9. So, we get 4 times 10 to the minus 6, minus 4 times 10 to the minus 6 over 36 divided by 9 is 4. So, these cancel out, just like so. And we're left with 10 to the 9 times 3 times 10 to the minus 6, which is 3 times 10 to the 3. And you Tins per coulomb or 3,000 newtons per coulomb. Nice explanation, right? Yes. But it's not 10 yet, right? No, no. I want to give you a student option. Okay. Quiet. Right. I'm excited to see how you explain it. Yeah, let me just get, put the diagram first. One second. So, one microphone. Uh, this is Q3. Mm -hmm. uh, Wait, yeah. Okay. And then this is 3 meters. Q1 is 4 microphones. That's 3 or 3. Q2 is? Minus eight, 8 microcoulombs. Microcoulombs. Use black. Black? Okay. I don't think he has black. Oh, there you go. Okay. Uh, Isaac, can you close the door? It looks bad. Okay. So let's find the electric field. At EY, EY. EY. Yeah, let's find just the y, y. Okay, thank you. The Y component of the electric field at Q3. So first of all, the electric field generated by Q1 will be up, right? Because it's a positive charge. And the electric field generated by this will be uh, along the hypotenuse facing this because it's a negative charge, right? So this is E3. Now, of course, we just want the, we're just interested in this the Y. This E2, actually. Oh, sorry, E2, thank you. Of course, we're just interested in the Y component. So we only want to take the Y component of E2. So how do we do that? Well, let's draw this again. Here's E1, here's E2, right? So we just want the Y component. So let's take a look at the angles here. Okay, this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So if this is 60, this has to be 120. And so let me uh, draw it again here. So this is 120. So that's 120, mm -hmm. and, I, and I cut it like this, then here's my right angle, and this is my 30 degree angle. So E3Y will just be E, oh sorry, E2, thank you, thank you, yeah. E2Y will simply be E2. Come on, don't be embarrassed, everyone makes this kind of mistake. 30, you're just waiting for me to make a mistake. Come on, man, yeah. Okay. Go. So. This is E to Y. Now E1 is just in the Y direction, so we don't have to take any sines or cosines. So that means in the Y direction, the net electric field is just whatever E1 is, but E2 Y is in the uh, down direction, right? So we have to subtract it. E2 sine 30. Okay, so now we just have to find E1, find E2, and just plug it in. So let's do that. So finding E1 is uh, pretty simple. So you have to use K, Q1 over R1 squared and finding E2 is also simple. So K Q2 over R2 squared. So now I'm going to say that Q is equal to 1 microcoulomb. I'm, I'm just going to define a Q as, as 1 microcoulomb. So Q1 is how many? 4 Q. Okay, so that will be 4 microcoulombs, which is 4 Q. This is a nice approach to reduce the amount of variables. R1 is Not how much? Not the amount of variables, but clutter. How much is R1? Just Q. Uh, no, R1. Oh, R1, 3 meters. 3 meters. So squaring that would give us yeah. 9 square meters. Yeah, 4 kq over 9. 
Now here I have again k. What is q2? q2 is minus 8q. Yeah, minus 8q. Now, so we just use the magnitude? Should I put minus 8 here? No, no, because I already accounted for the direction. So don't put minus. Okay, over the distance. What is the distance? 6 meters, so 6, six squared. squared. Okay, so this is 8 k q 36, which is divided by 4. Divided by 4. 2 over two 9. Over 9, wow. Very good. So now we can just plug these in here. So Don't forget the sign 30 degrees. Yeah, so let's plug it in. So instead of E1, what should I put? 4 k q over 9. 4 k q over 9. Instead of E2, what should I put? 2 k q over 9. 2 and you know that sine 30 K is exactly one half. Over nine. And sine 30, instead of sine 30, what should I put? One half. One half. Uh, so one half of two is? One. So you can cancel two. those out. What? Oh, and one, yeah. sorry. <laughs> and you have a common denominator. Yeah, and now you have a common denominator. Four KQ over nine minus KQ over nine. What is this? Uh, three KQ over nine or KQ over three. Then you can just plug in and solve. There's no way I just heard from an Ivy League master student in physics so, that half of two is two. <laughs> so K is just nine times ten to the nine. Q is one times ten to the minus six. Uh, three is just three. So, so it's um, it's, uh, it's three 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 thousand. That's right. Three. 10, uh, 10 to the 9. Uh, well, you made the test. Six. Of course you know the answer. I wanted to say about Refat's approach, it was mostly the same, but I really liked his use of giving the variable Q a value of 1 microcoulomb in order to make the calculations a little bit simpler so he could just plug in at the that's end true. and make everything shorter. That's, that's true. Okay, so now... Time is uh, of now, the now essence. Let's, let's draw the triangle. Is 3 meter. And three meter away, you have Q1, and Q1 is of course four microcoulomb. And then uh, three row three meter away, you have Q2, and Q2 is of course negative eight microcoulomb, and this is six meter. Is that right? Yep. So now, as you know that this is positive, and this is positive, and this guy want to move away, so repel. So this one is of course E. Uh, well, that's not okay. So this is positive, so it's outward. And this one is negative, uh, so then this one is this direction. So you have now E1 and E2. So E1, let's find the E1. How can you find the E1? So E1 is very easy. E1 is KQ1 over R squared. So 9 times 10 is to 9, Q1 is 4 times 10 is to minus 6, and divide by 9, which is cancel. Of course, you have 4. Uh, for uh, 4,000. Okay, now E2 is Newton's per coulomb. Newton's per coulomb, and which is 90 degree. Okay, now 90 degree. Uh, okay, Q2 over R squared, which is 9 times 10 raised to 9. Of course, Q2 is uh, 8 times 10 raised to minus 6, of course, 36. And this is uh, 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 72, right? 72, 36 goes to 72 twice. So it's 2000. 2000, which is what degree? 2000, this is 30 degree. So this must be 60 degree. This must be 30 degree. So this must be 330 degree. Okay, so now you have E, you have E1, and you have E2, you have E1x, E1y, E2x, and E2y. E1x is 4000. Cosine, of course, 90, as you see that, and then 4000 sine 90, and then 2000 cosine what, Isaac? Cosine 30, 330. And 2000 sine 330. Mm -hmm. now, we do not need this yes. one. We do not need this one. In, in fact, this one is actually zero. Oh, okay, so now can you take a car calculator and tell me this too, because we don't. We need this to take. Well, it should be calculate. pretty obvious that this one is 4,000, since sine 330 is negative one half, this is minus 1,000. So this minus this is 3,000. 3, that seems like the most calculation heavy approach, but it's still mostly the same way. Okay, so all right. Sure, now we have three approaches, and when you press round, that person call on the approach. Okay.
Construct a precise diagram to show an electron is suspended between two plates. Also show the direction of Fe. This is an interesting one. Can I solve it? Yeah, absolutely. Well, this is actually actually quite similar to number five in the diagram we have to draw for it. So we know it's suspended, which means that the force of gravity, which we already we know. We draw the plates. Yeah, I will draw them once I know what they are. The force of gravity is downwards. We already know that, which means the force. Electric force, which is the only other force, must be keeping it upwards right. in order to keep it suspended. So Fe equals Both Fe. forces equal in magnitude opposite in direction, make it, making the net force is zero, acceleration is That's zero. That's true. Fe is equal to negative Fg. So that means that Fe plus Fg makes the net force zero. Okay. So now, since this is a negative charge, the electric force is in the opposite direction, the electric field. I hope you can see this because the electric force is inversely proportional to the charge, which means that if the charge is negative, then the electric field is a negative compared to the electric force. So that means that the electric field must be uh, going this direction. That's incorrect. Really? It's not inversely proportional to the charge, it's proportional to the charge. E is kq over r squared. Oh, yeah. You're right. E is equal to fq. F over q. Wait. F over a small q. Oh, yeah. I was talking about it being uh, proportional, inversely proportional to the small charge. Oh, the test charge. Yeah. I'm sorry. I got a little confused between big q and small q right there. Yeah. But, uh, however it is, we already know that the electric field travels this way. Now, whenever we're talking about an electric field, we know that by definition, a positive charge is one which has a radially outward electric field. And a negative charge is one that has a radially inward electric field, which creates this iconic shape that you might see on the regions. Right. So... So we're going to create two, two plates, one on the top, one on the bottom. Yeah, and it should be pretty obvious to see that the electric field will travel from positive to negative by this definition. Absolutely. So that means that the plate up here is positive and the plate down here is negative. Excellent. Okay, that takes us from last problem and Brown, can you read the last problem? Yeah. This one is pretty simple. Okay. A 100 kilogram object is placed 1.3 Earth radius above the surface of the Earth. Find the gravitational field. Okay, so uh, first, if we have an object that's at the surface of the Earth, what is the gravitational field? Just 9.8 well, by we definition. Can find it by setting Fg equal to the universal law of gravity. We can, but right. that is a waste of time. <laughs> and Fg is mg, right? And so that means the small mass, the whatever your test mass is, cancels out. So that tells you the gravitational field near the surface of the Earth is gm over r squared, which is 9.8 meters. No, so Newton over kilogram. Uh, Let's use the conventional okay. unit. Uh, Not conventional, but it's helpful for this problem. That's right. 9.8. Now, in this case, we are a little bit higher than this. We are... Uh, 1.3 Earth radii Earth radii above No, th above that is point 0.3 So we're going to add them oh, up The total The yeah. total is Wait, no, 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 yeah, no, yeah. no No So that no, means No, it's not The gravitational field Use. Is going to Oh, go. oh, it's 1.3 yeah. yeah, he's right 1.3 oh. above 1.3, yeah, okay. yeah So you're going to add them up It says 1.3 above the surface That's right, okay So, so 2.3 We're going to have 2.3 times square. the radius of the earth square. So this is going to be, let me just factor out that 2.3 mm -hmm. squared, gm over r squared. Now, of course, we know gm over r squared, we already know what that is. That's just 9.8. So the new gravitational field should be 9.8 over 2.3 squared. So 5.853. So 5.3. No, it's not. No, 9.8 divided by 5.3. 5.3. No, it's not. Oh, what? It's, 5. it's divided by 5.3. Oh, it's divided by... Oh, I see, I see. 
divided by 5.3. Which is equal to 1.85. So it's the moon's gravity. Mm. About. One moon is 1.6. Yeah, so it's, if you're here, it's the moon. Not really. <laughs> No, it's about the moon. Planet. If it is 1.2, right? 1.2 yeah. probably. I think so, this is, yeah. no, it would be higher because... Oh, it would be higher. It's yeah. 1.4, yeah, 1.4. Yeah. 1. So, 5, yeah. I think this is the approach that most of us would take for this problem. So, yeah. I don't feel the need to show a separate approach. Okay. All right. Well, so, that's it. All right, so okay, go over there. And what did you learn from this... Uh,